Hello, King's Only. In 10. Thank you. Bye. 10. King's College Hospital, London. A major trauma centre. Have you got a blood pressure yet? She was on the floor and I thought she's dead. And one of the busiest A&E departments in the world. Stabbing, code red. King's is everything. Everything pounds in through that door. The fire has been trapped between him and the bridge. A place where love... Can I wait here until she comes home? Can I come home with her? Life. Oh, apart from having a brain injury, never better. What happened? I got bitten. By who? By me mate. <laughs> and loss unfold every single day. I've not got a happy feeling of you. No. Not breathing. Stop. All the patients you're about to see were treated in one department in just one 24-hour period. You're going to be all right. You know what happens when things are bad? Daddy's here. Please don't cry. The moment that you're in recess and you're really sick and all you can think about is, am I going to live, am I going to die? Silly things go out the window. And ultimately, what's important is realised that you're loved and that you're not alone. and his face shape was very feminine, except for the beard. <laughs> see, I took it to a whole new level. Oh, my God, did you see Charlotte's baby? Yeah. Mason. He's gorgeous, isn't he? Joseph Diggins. Joseph's been on a night out with friends. He's hurt his ankle. Come and take a seat. Tell me what's been happening with you. Um, well, basically, I went out last night and um, I'm not even sure what happened. It just, I must have just, I was not slipped because I didn't fall over, but I might have twisted on the ankle. Just twisted your ankle? Yeah, but it's, okay. I took my shoe off and it was just started throbbing. Were you? Okay, <laughs> then more than likely. <laughs> But you don't remember doing it? No, I literally, after the commotion, for about two hours, I was fine. What, what you say, commotion? What, what, well, what like, under the influence of alcohol, yeah. first right. and foremost? Just, just, okay. it, it and being off. a lad, um, as they do. All right. It was just like a little bit of running around, like, it was chickens. Right, OK. So I'm not going to get a straight answer, am I? No. No, because he can't it was even remember alcohol. what happened, yeah. Yeah, and he is a lad. Right, OK. That little bit of banter relaxes them and they feel that they can speak to me that way and I just enjoy that fun you can get out of a patient and it eases them you know their stress level if you like so a bit of a commotion running around without his head on because he's a chicken yeah. basically is that what you said yeah <laughs> <laughs> That's a good interpretation. <laughs> I'll put patient is unsure of <laughs> mechanism of injury. Yeah. Patient's such a kind word. <laughs> Being in hospital is not nice. So, yeah, you've got a support of a partner. I love it. And if it's a man that's the patient and he's coming from the, with the wife, me and the wife usually gang up on, on the husband and say, where'd you get him from? Have you not heard of eBay? Can't you sell him? All right, then. Do you suffer from any medical problems? No, no. Besides being a chicken? <laughs> no, fear of commitment. <laughs> yeah, but isn't that nice, man? Uh, <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> We're having I'm a good go here. have commitment you have. <laughs> <laughs> the brother and sister, by the way. Oh, right, OK. Like that, yeah. 
Oh, uh, that's why you're being so mean to him. Yeah. If I'd known that from the beginning, I would have joined him okay, more. Okay, all right. Excellent. Right, whip your sock off, let me have a look. Do yeah, I know, hold on. All right, whereabouts is the pain? It's underneath here. Yeah, there. right there. Yeah, there? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, I see the funny side of most things. I, I, don't get me wrong, I wouldn't go into recess and start giggling my head off and, and joking around. There's a time and a place for seriousness, and there's a time and a place for laughter. <laughs> I can have a go. <laughs> <laughs> and go and sell tickets, we can all have a go. <laughs> Seventy-one-year-old Josephine is in recess with severe breathing difficulties. Sorry, could you take that off now? Yeah, yeah, lovely. All right, darling. there you go, Mum. That's better. Better. She's been brought in by her daughter Jackie and her partner Kerry. Yeah, all right. Yeah, it's cool. Good. Blood pressure's still really low, but that's what the fluid's for as well. You're right. So we're waiting for the medical doctors to come and see her. Were you told that? No. So the medical team will probably be the ones that take over her care and look after her, so they're going to come down and see her here, and then we'll look for a bed in the no hospital. Right, sure. no, All right. Thanks for what you're doing. Oh, no, that's a Cheers, pleasure. Do you need any pain relief? No, you sure? No empty sickness? You'll let us know if you do. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hi. My name's Ozan, I'm one of the medical doctors. How are you? I'm all right. Feeling better? Yeah. Good. Lots. Here we are. Hello. What's been going on? Just, if you don't mind. No, it's fine. Um, this morning, I um, went into the bedroom to look at my mum, as usual, give her a medication and so on. Yeah. She wasn't responding. She was breathing fast. Just remind me, you have cancer of the lung? which has gone to, where is it spread to? Right here. Yep. And it was small cell, is that right? That's right. Um. Side of the face, in the back of the brain, 15, um, it had shrunk from 15 millimetres to 10. Mm -hmm. Then it had transferred to the side of the head, back of the brain, which was already there. Um, side of the, side of the, uh, mum, talk to me. Come on, come on, keep with me. The side, um, your side, isn't it? The side of your left side, the breast, your lymph nodes, wasn't it? You stick with me, you ain't going nowhere. That morning she was actually admitted. I watched my mum and I panicked when I went in there to give her a medicine in the morning, like I did every morning. I'd always check on her, but he had a baby monitor beside the bed. So even if she was to cough, Your mouth? it'd wake me. Yeah. Okay. And she was very quiet, and I walked in there, and she was literally struggling for breath. Yeah. I thought that was it. When we brought her in, I thought that was it. Absolutely, totally, I thought, Christ. Not now. I think you've just got a really bad infection, OK? Mm. And I think because you've had it going on for about a week, mm. some people you do very well and then just tip over, you know, it just yeah. tips you over, and I think that's where you are currently because your blood pressure's low and your heart's going a bit fast. These are all things you expect in someone who's got an infection. Okay. Okay, we should have to keep a close eye on you and give you antibiotics for a drip, for a line, okay? And give you lots of fluids. Okay. Mm. Breathing shallow. Yeah, we need get on a... Come on, open your eyes for me. Stay with me. Okay? Mum? I knew there was a possibility, a huge possibility, that, yeah, my mum weren't coming back out of that hospital. I was looking at her breathing, the stats that were on the actual screen. But I thought then, 
Nah. She ain't gonna die today. That's it. which I have had. Tiramisu. Tiramisu. The pudding. The pudding, yes. So, <laughs> the Italian pudding. I went to Amy with my mother. I think we're both a little eccentric, but she takes it a step further. <laughs> Business analyst Sara has come to King's with her mum, Aziz. She's, she'll talk to anybody. Uh, she doesn't live in London, she lives in Turkey, and you know she'll strike up a conversation with people on the bus. She knows everybody by name in the local supermarket. She's gone and introduced herself to the neighbours. It'd be nice if you stayed for an hour. Then come back after breakfast and she should be almost ready to go in. <laughs> Another wrist. Your wrist. No, cat bitter. Taking it to the vet. And you? What did you do? I fell off the bike. Oh. Oh. I uh, hadn't lived with my mother since I was 14 when we were in Australia. Oh, then we moved to Saudi Arabia and I'd spent a year with her and then I got sent to boarding school and then after that I never really spent more than two weeks with her and she's a widow, uh, recently widowed and we've now talked about her coming over every winter and staying here because it's just too lonely on her farm. So how do you eat this, this, this fish roll <coughs> dippy thing that you bought? Do you eat it with bread or...? or yeah. yeah, that's why I bought the bread, because I bought hummus. Oh, I see. So we sort of have a nibbly dinner tonight. Yeah. 12-year-old Mateus has come in with his grandma, Marcia. Mom, second mom is my grandmother because she helps me. She helps me with homework. She helps me understanding things. She gives me all her knowledge and all that. In fact, the whole story, since from the start of my life, she told me. <laughs> Come and take a seat here. My name's Kim. I'm one of the emergency nurse practitioners. Mm -hmm. So, um, tell me what's been happening today. Um, basically, this morning, she um, went to go up the stairs. She slipped over and she hold it on the corridor, metal thing. And what, like a banister? Yeah, yeah, yeah and she okay. hold it there and um, her wrist hurt it. So her wrist, yeah? Yeah, her wrist. Does she not speak any English? Uh, no, she doesn't speak any English. OK, is, is she right-handed? Do you want this kind of thing? Do you Right. Yeah. Right-handed. Apart from his grandma and mum, the rest of Mateus' family live in Brazil. OK. Yeah. Yeah. Right, okay. I think this is coming from the shoulder more than anywhere else. Ela falou que tá vindo mais pelo pelo. All right. I'm the only one in the whole family who speaks English. I'm the only one. The rest just speaks Portuguese. So what we need to do is I'm going to give us some paracetamol and codeine mm -hmm. tablets to go home with. But I wanted to try and keep moving as much as possible within her pain. Uh -huh. Ela falou assim que é, a dor que você está sentindo, vó. Ela falou que nós temos um músculo bem grande aqui que movimenta todo o braço. É, para botar bastante gelo e movimentar, que em quatro ou cinco dias voltará ao normal. Yeah. What you said? What you said? In my family, 
if something happens, Mateus, come do help. Mateus, come do this. Mateus, you need to do this. And then uh, I start to do all the things. Uh, you ever thought of becoming an interpreter, uh, young man? Maybe, yeah. Very but good, so. very good. Your yeah. English is very good. Lee, Jackie's niece and Josephine's granddaughter, has arrived at the hospital. Don't worry, you didn't need your eyeballs, did you? No. They reckon that she's got a real nice infection. Don't they? And it's tipped her right over the edge. That's why her breathing, her, what do you call it, it was 38. Where are you going now? Um. Oh, you, you, no, you're not. Oh, no, you're not. Not until I know that you've got a full MOT. Do you get it? When you get a full MOT to say that you are breathing all right on all cylinders, well, you can come home. Breathing mm -hmm. is, you ain't had to look at yourself dying, I have. Don't lose us Hmm? Don't lose us Oh, well, do you know what? You know how to while you're still breathing. <laughs> Oh. Does someone want a cup of tea? Can I make someone a cup of tea? Go on, I yeah, all right. Thank you. Are you all right? Come on. Juice, anything? Do you want a hand to move right, Push up with your feet for me. Push up, push up, push up. Come oh, on, look oh, 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 oh. Everyone thinks it's about blood and guts and trauma and needles and drugs, but a and &E is so much more than that. Pedals. Are we able to lie you flat for a bit to move yeah, you up? <laughs> with things like cancers and terminal illnesses, I don't think there's any strict rule or good advice on how to prepare. Roll over towards me. A lot of the time, I think family and friends are always going to live in hope that something is going to happen and that the nightmare will go and that their loved one will be OK. Just pop it in like that. Yep. Now over to the doctor. Roll over. My mum, she had the best pair of legs I've ever seen on a woman. She had a fetish for shoes. She used to drive me mad with her shoes. Three. Teamwork. And you could always guarantee they went pick, click clock down the road. And every time you can guarantee you, people would stop and have to look again because everything about my mum, her hair, her eyeliner, her great big eyes. She always had beautiful big eyes. She was always glamour puss. She was. You tell me when to stop. Yep. Is that all right? Mm. She had the chemotherapy and she started to lose her hair. That killed her. That really did kill her because her crown of glory was her hair. Everyone knew my mum for her hair. Your breathing going funny again now, isn't it? It's because you're laying down. Do you want her up a bit? Yeah, could we? Not being she had breathing's got to go a bit wonky. The scariest thing of all is to see your mum with no hair, bald, putting on her eyeliner, shaking, where she's trying to put it on, trying to stand in front of the mirror to be that woman all over again. I love these pyjamas. I love them. Better selfies. Thanks, Noodle. I don't think you're ever ready to let go, and I think the fact that Josephine had come into hospital was probably a big realisation to them that maybe this is it. To be stuck in a bed and recess all of a sudden must be horrible for the family. It's, I think it's just a reminder and a reality check of where this may be going. So how do you have your tea? <laughs> Strong, no sugar. Are you sure you guys are right? Yeah, I'm Seriously, thanks. Thank mm -hmm. you. Um, 40% I'll grab one. <laughs> you're getting better. Yep. Mine, you've not had a drink, have you, for a little while? We'll see. Look, give us a chance to get you back. Oh, I'm looking at all right. Daddy, I saw a film at night. I see a film, you know. 
I see film, people go to the doctors and, and they put you in sleep and, you know, they, they measure your feet and things and then they rub it, a hick, a hick bark on, so it's a bit of a hick. They couldn't put her in the ambulance, you know why? Because you know she was too fat, Daddy. But they couldn't take off her, her you know, her feet. Yeah, they couldn't take off her feet. Yeah, but they couldn't take off her, her, you know, her, her big tummy. Olivia's five. She's banged her head on a coffee table. She's brought her dad with her. Come on, Daddy. You're coming too. Fuck it. They just put you to sleep. You don't hear nothing. Just be brave. I'm feeling excited anyway. Yeah, I was just running with my sister. We were playing catch. I was saying, you can't catch me, and I didn't see the glass table, then I just hit myself on the, on the glass table. Uh, Daddy, are you going to feel worried? Then my dad was, was crying, he, he was so worried about me. He told me, I'm very worried about you, Olivia, I'm very, very worried. Were but, you worried? Yeah. I was wondering about my head. I thought it was it was just going to um, go around. It was going to go uh, uh, down on the floor. I don't need a wheelchair, do I? I don't need a wheelchair. Yeah. Hi, Caroline. Hi, Ray. <laughs> nice to meet you, Ray. Ready. 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 Well, we're quite low priority, so we've been here two hours. Really? Yeah. Um, You'll be able to call me. You haven't been seen at all. Oh, yes, we've seen three hours. Yes. Yeah. Well, see, Sarah was bitten this morning by her cat. She was taking the cat to bed. That's, that's quite sad. That's all. I've got a cat pie. <laughs> On, on oh, both hands. Oh, come on. Yeah, but they're, they're not bad, but they're swelling. And because she's just finished radiotherapy yeah, yeah. treatment yeah, yeah. for cancer, yeah. Yeah. her white blood cells are strained. And then this lady fell off her bicycle because she's had breast cancer. She's had the lymph nodes removed, so she hasn't got any lymph nodes. She's downplaying it, Mummy. <laughs> just over a year ago, Sarah was diagnosed with breast cancer shortly after she separated from her husband. And I'd only been living on my own for five months when I found the breast lump, and I was very worried about going through that on my own. No, I found my lump when I was in India, but I was so healthy at the time that I just totally ignored it. And then I just forgot about it for about three months. <laughs> But I think it was I a very slow growing. It takes them to grow. Very slow growing. I don't know. I don't, don't ask me. I'm not Excuse me. Yours grew in between two appointments. Really? No, no. That was because the biopsy irritated it. They said yes, that they. Yeah. How big was your lump? Uh, oh, ours was the size of a football. <laughs> ours. <laughs> it's <laughs> ours. Uh, the. <coughs> the. Um, original area was 2.2 centimetres. It was really nice when Mama came over and I didn't have to go through it on my own. And I really didn't want her to come over, but uh, I allowed her to come over for her benefit, <laughs> which was, uh, which was uh, in my mind, that's how I justified it. But the reality was I really needed her help and um, I didn't realise how impaired the chemotherapy made me. It impaired my thinking as well as making me physically unwell. Uh, and so she, she came over and she cooked me a, dinner, a meal every night, packed my lunch, um, lectured me about staying in bed and not going out and uh, looked after me. It was really lovely. It's something I'm not used to. I guess only your mother can mother you, really. And I think we got a really deep connection. Ian, the on-call consultant, has come to see Josephine. 
Why was she in in Knights of Chen? She came in for a shot of chest pain, which we... I don't know that I'm seeing very much that's new, to be quite honest. Okay. So, uh, okay. Hi, hello. 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 I'm Dr. Fordrex. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see you're on the KP Cure. Mm. Well, I can't, because there's, there's no reason why she can't eat, is there? There is, I've got no teeth. <laughs> <laughs> well, in that case... <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, we'll get the emergency dental replacement officer to come and give you some teeth. So, listen, what I need to know is what you're like normally, uh, uh, how breathless are you? when you're at your best. Can you get around? No. So what about going upstairs? Do you have to do that? Oh, I can't do that. Can't do that. What about getting from the bed to the bathroom? Yeah, I can make notes. But it's difficult if I can do that. Is that, is that quite hard work? Yeah. How long has that been really hard work? F first of January. Really? So, OK. Prior to that, she was up and down the street doing the shopping. No, no, you're doing fine, you're doing fine. The bit of you that's... The bit of you that's the infection that's causing the breathless, we should be able to sort out. The bit of you that's the tumour, I'm not so sure about. Mm -hmm. But I think we'll have a good try to see if we can get on top of that infection, because even uh, a, a small gain would be worthwhile, wouldn't it? Because Josephine's cancer is terminal, decisions need to be made about the question of resuscitation before she's admitted to a high dependency unit. But she's still for ICU review. Well, that's a question discussion, perhaps a very open discussion we ought to have. Um, I think I'd like just to have a little think about that and come back and talk to you about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There was no question, uh, let me say, that this lady came in with a chest infection, which was likely to be due to a bacterial infection, and required treatment with antibiotics. And there was no question that she was ill enough to need to go to a high dependency area. The question I think that raised would what would happen if, despite that treatment, she did deteriorated or alternatively had didn't respond to that treatment? Would she uh, want to be in an intensive care unit on a breathing machine with an incredibly strong probability that she wouldn't survive? Would she really like to die in that situation? I think he's thinking. Mm -hmm. I think he's thinking while he's talking. Yeah. I'm on the way out. Yeah. Hey? I'm on the way I ain't out. Gonna let you go yet, girl. You ain't going nowhere. No. You got the bleeding infection in your lungs, that's all you got. So hold on a second before you say that's it, I'm throwing a towel in, all right? No. She man, I'm on my way out, as in out the door, coming home for a dinner. No, she don't. She knows full well what it was on about. No, you're not on your way out, so give it a give it a chance, yeah? Remember? And as for the cancer, you do see Dr. Lau on Friday. This Friday coming. So, you, you know what I mean? He hasn't so given up on you. He's the one that's got the say on that. And he hasn't given up on you. No. So, don't you be giving up on you, all right? What he's saying is, he try and get on top of this. He knows you know he's, you've got cancer. He knows you've got cancer. Listen, I, I, sometimes. Sometimes doctors have to have very difficult discussions with patients, yeah, all right? I know that. The difficult discussion I want to have with you. She wanted to end her life in dignity with her friends around her, and she didn't want to be on a breathing machine. Have you guys got any questions while you're here? Sorry? Any questions while they're here? At this moment, no. No? No. Do you want me to pop that on properly? I'm doing a check first. Yeah. 
She's going to get better, aren't you, girl? You're going to get out of here. Who numbers have got so much better? Mm, we'll see how it goes a little bit, but No, you won't. You'll bloody get better, right? You hear me? You're having a full service history. Mm. You're having an MOT done, and we're going to get you out of here, right? All right. right. And you've got all got each other, you? Yeah. And you do that, I think. Shut up. Huh? 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 Huh?
No, but I did the scalp It didn't work for me. Didn't it? No, well, I had long hair and I cut it to about here. No, I virtually cut it all off. Uh, so I was thinking Sarah's coming towards the end of her treatment for cancer. When I got diagnosed, I was shell-shocked. In fact, I'd done most of my crying before the diagnosis because I'd been given a heads up that it was not good. Whereas when I spoke to my mother, um, I was in a strong place and she wasn't. And she, she cried a lot. But you haven't had any cancer. Pardon? You haven't had any cancer. No, I don't believe in it. <laughs> My father has. My father's yeah, my husband cancer. Yeah. My second husband died four, three, four years ago, three years ago, of prostate cancer. And um, but he is very. Um, the thought of dying actually doesn't scare mm. me, but it's the thought of being ill, really. And uh, I, I didn't want to be scared. I wanted to be strong. Um, I didn't want anybody to know that it worried me. Um, but I now realise that it was probably better if I'd given in to, you know, some of the worry and I could have dealt with the issues earlier, you know. Sorry. <laughs> um, I don't think I dealt with it the right way. I think it would have been better to Stop pretending everything was normal. Sorry, missed it. I think it's the triage person. Yeah. It's you! Woo! Bitch. <laughs> Mummy, language! See you later. Bye bye! <laughs> doctor to have that conversation it must be the hardest conversation to have with a family with a cancer or something like what Josephine had you're not going to be able to fix that problem the focus changes to symptom control keeping her comfortable and making the last few months or weeks as best as you can in the you know in the right environment with the right people around them Basically, he's asked the question about whether or not she wants to be resuscitated. He said basically, they'll do whatever they can, whatever they can to try and stop to stop um, the infection, sort of infection and everything else. He said, but ultimately, it's your choice if you wanted to be put on a machine if things got that bad and you was unconscious and would you want to be kept going? And she said no. So he's not said that there's any change other than the fact that she's got this infection, OK? And they are going to do everything they can to get on top of the infection. So basically she gets exactly the same care as anybody else would. But asked, did you want to be put on a ventilator to be kept alive? And she said no. We ain't got long. I think the time you got with us is special. Mm. 
You can't go in there with red eyes and nor can I. She already said, you know, I'm on my way out. I said, no, you're not. And she's not. Hello, sir. Hi. Hi, let's go in. Thank you. My mom's just following. Oh, that's Fine. sorry. Don't really take your time. Right, let's go. Do you want to come with me, please? Yeah, yeah. I'll bring it's silly coming to a &E No, for no, 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 no. Sorry. We're really going again for medical stuff. Are you going to bank? <laughs> yeah, this is true. <laughs> <laughs> Let me quickly have a look. So, that's a bit superficial. It is Yeah, small. it is. And she bit me there as well. But that one hardly broke the skin. This one bled a lot. Did it? Yeah. One of the things I hadn't appreciated beforehand is that, yes, yeah, so you get cancer. I thought, you know, you were in remission and then that was it, the slate was clean and you started over again. So um, the increased risk of it returning has made me change some of my life choices. Um, I was wanting to have children, I can't now, um, and I probably wouldn't adopt either because I wouldn't want to be a single parent um, with cancer and put a child through that. So I've had to come to terms with the cancer, but I think at times the thought of not being a mother was harder. So now I can be completely selfish. <laughs> Do what I want, buy what I want. <laughs> Give me a second. Oh, OK. I'm going to write um, the tetanus for you. OK. Um, so what do you think? I think it's best I think definitely. Yeah. I mean, you say she's not a wild cat, but she does lick her bottom. <laughs> I think it's best to <laughs> so have it. Just yeah. rather, so you're, you're it's not a family habit. <laughs> no, when I say she, I meant the cat, not yeah, my mother. Right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. I've never caught her licking her bottom. Definitely, no. I wouldn't expect that at all. <laughs> I suppose the blessing is a different perspective on life, different priorities. Uh, you know, I think I was on on track to work for the next 10, 15 years in banking and and then retire somewhere remote to try and make my money last. Um, whereas now it's more emphasis on living for today. Here we are. Oh, did you want a lift? Oh, actually, I was just trying to get arrangements to, to um, uh, work it how to go home. Oh. But you wouldn't mind giving me a lift somewhere in that yeah. direction? Right, She's topping you up with vodka. I don't want you to have to drink it. It's too much effort. I'll just put it straight in. Oh, God, so um, excuse me. What? There's a bit of chocolate outside. There's a bit of chocolate yeah. outside. Go and nick it. No. Go on, go and nick it. No, she's, not, she's after nicking the chocolate. The penguin girl, this one here. It's gone. Someone's had it. She's been here with us. What? It was a twirl. <laughs> it would be my worst nightmare to have to look after one of my parents if they were passing on. But here's this person that you love so much who brought you into this world. You know, they nurtured you to an age where you can finally start looking after yourself. They put you through schooling. No. They, you know, help you get your first job. They help you do absolutely everything. Every time you have a breakup, you always ring mum or dad crying. And I just think, for the tables to be turned, where this person who you just think is the most amazing person in the world is now lying in a bed, and their life is slowly coming to an end. I'm gonna miss you, girls. Oh, I'm gonna miss you more. Don't you so. <laughs> and now you're the one to look after them and try and nurture them and make the other end of life a little bit better. Have we got everything? Yeah. Well, only about it must be set. just, it would be so sad, but then maybe in a more positive way, you can kind of give back for what they gave you. Just mind your elbows there, darling, because I don't want them to get caught. 
All right, let's go. Thank you. I was so care all the time, so it's a big, huge lump to be taken out. Um, bearing in mind, I'd do her tablets, cook, clean, feed, do whatever she wanted, 24 hours. Um, didn't matter what time of day. So, yeah, suddenly you're there 24 hours for someone, and then they're gone. You're like, rattling around, not knowing what to do yourself. Mine inherited 13 cats. They keep me busy. I had a bit of a shock when I first got here. <gasps> Gunshot wounds, stabbings, <laughs> push bikes colliding with buses. You got hit by a car? No, it was station, mate. Oh. Yeah, don't see too many farming accidents down here. Okay, excuse me. Thank you.